Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great week. It's that time of the year already, time to get the outdoor rink all set up, or the ODR as many of you call it. And this year, which is the fifth year we've done the hockey rink, we're going to do four foot tall boards around the majority of it. And then this rink is 120 feet long by 60 feet wide. Now, if you have any questions about the process or the boards we use or just the setup in general, please comment below. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. The first step was to locate the metal posts I have pounded in flush with the ground so I don't have to remeasure the rink dimensions each year. I did one last mowing for the season and then got to work on preparing for the boards. Now in case this is your first year setting up boards, I thought I'd show the basic steps of measuring out for the rink. I like to put a big stake in the starting corner and then measure out the length for the rink. In our case, it's 120 feet in length. Next, I'll measure for the width, which is 60 feet. And once that's done, you'll want to set stakes in each corner and then measure the diagonals and adjust until your giant rectangle is square. Use the old Pythagorean's theorem to calculate what the diagonal measurement should be. To keep our boards nice and straight, I staked out each corner. I'll run string between each of the stakes and then use some spray paint to draw the line. So all I'm doing here is tying the string to the post and pulling it tight. Keep it pretty low to the ground without hitting it so that you can easily trace the line with the fluorescent marking paint. Then it's just a matter of marking the line so you'll be able to line up the boards nice and straight. Marking paint has an inverted spray tip designed to spray upside down. And make sure to use a bright color so you can see it easily throughout the setup process. The corners are done a little different for the various brands of board manufacturers, but for nice rink boards like we're using, they recommend measuring in 7 foot 6 inches from each corner post and spraying a mark. This will be the start and end point for each board when you assemble the corners. This is done at all four corners and accommodates for a total of three boards to form each corner. Here's a look at the finished painted lines and corner hash marks which will help get the board set up properly. It's ODR okay, huh? season, baby! <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right, so here's a look at the basic parts of our board setup. So here are the four foot tall, tall boys boards. These are 18 inch tall boards. These are black support brackets. And these are rear supports and feet for the four foot tall boards. My hockey buddies, Braden, Chase, and Christian stopped over to help put the boards up, and we started with the tall boys' boards at the far corner. Now, when installing the boards, you want to install them in a clockwise direction so that the next board always fits over the pegs of the board you just installed. The tall boards have a lot of surface area with those feet that actually touches the ground, which helps stabilize them, but you may need to shim under a board here and there if you have bumps or high spots along your terrain where the boards are going to be going. And here's a quick demonstration on how these boards go together in case you're interested. We'll slide this into place, just like so. Slide this into place, and if you need to, you can hit it a couple times. And then we can put on the feet, just slide in just like this. Make sure that that rounded side is facing up. Okay, then we'll just flip it up. The boys got more of the panels assembled and then we started securing them with the black brackets to hold them in place and keep things from shifting while each of the boards is installed. I moved down the line and put a stake in each black bracket and then we double checked that the boards were lined up over the spray painted line so they were nice and straight. I'll come back and put stakes in each of the rear white supports in a later step. Christian loaded up a trailer with more of the tall boys boards and started laying them out on the far side while Braden and Chase continued to assemble that first side of the rink. You can order the black brackets with or without plastic spikes and the spikes do work well if you have decent soil and get them in before the ground freezes, but I have a ton of clay and rocks in the soil at our house which makes it harder to get those spikes in. So I decided to use a sawzall to take off all the spikes which just makes it easier for my situation. The other big benefit is they're easy to put in the ground if it's already frozen because you just hammer in a metal spike and it's secured. 
We'll commonly get 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts as storms and fronts move in and out of the Rocky Mountain foothills. And so we have to use all the stake holes provided to keep those boards secured. For our size drink, we needed a lot of stakes. So I decided to get a rebar cutter, which makes cutting rebar super easy. And it's one of the best tool investments I've made. Now, once your rink is filled with water to cover the white feet, the boards will be rock solid. So if you plan to fill quickly after putting up the boards, then you'll likely be able to get by with far fewer stakes. My wife Britt and son Jack delivered more brackets to the guys as they continued installing more boards. We reached the first corner and started to form the curve. As you can see, the boards are able to pivot on those pegs. So you can start the curve at the seven foot six mark and then end at the other seven foot six mark on the other side. Money. Our 13 year old lab named Helena gave us a thumbs up that the corner looked good, so we started on that next side. Once you get the hang of things, the boards will keep going up faster, so we were able to tackle this end pretty quickly. We did have a couple high spots here and there, so we used a scrap 1x4 board and some clay from the high spot to shim under one side of the board. The next corner went together quickly, and then it was time to cut a transition board to transition from the 48 inch tall boy boards to the 18 inch tall boards. All you need to do is follow the cut line on the back side of the board with a circular saw to get the perfect cut. The transition board will then connect to the pegs just like all the other boards. I actually forgot to install the white rear supports when I was putting up the transition piece, so I went back and put them on later, but you will use one full size support and then cut the other support board at the manufacturer's mark so it's a little shorter. Next, we moved on to installing the 18 inch tall boards. These short boards go together a little faster than the tall boards since there are fewer parts to them. The black brackets support the smaller boards and are held to the board with the lower lip of the bracket and the aluminum channel on the back of the board. We decided to do the shorter boards on this side so it's easy for skaters to get on and off the ice and so we can more easily watch from the house and while sitting on benches. We're also able to use ramps to get the snowblower over these short boards. After the short board section, we transition back to those taller boards and the boards aren't made for checking, but they are great for holding the puck in while shooting, which is the reason we really like the taller boards. Plus they make the rink look cool and give it a more professional look. And we've attached a few signs with logos to them as well. And here's the last side going up. It was a beautiful day without much wind, which definitely helps out when installing the taller boards since they catch a lot more wind than those shorter 18 inch tall boards. The guys found the yellow bumpers that cap the top of the boards and help hold the liner in place. They look similar to pool noodles, but they're much more heavy duty version of them that grips tight to the top of the boards. The last corner went up and it was time to connect the final board to the first section. And this can sometimes take a bit of finagling to get those pegs lined up. And you may need to have a couple people pulling the boards together to get everything just perfect. But once you get it, give the board a few taps with your rubber mallet to set it in place and your rink isn't closed, which is a pretty darn good feeling. Holy smokes, boys. There we go. There we go. work, boys. Wow. Heck yeah. <laughs> Christian started putting the yellow bumper caps in place for the time being, just so they're out at the rink and ready for when the liner does go in when the weather gets cold enough. The bumpers have a snug fit over the top of the boards and give it a professional look. Now that the boards were up, I went ahead and put two 18 inch long half inch rebar stakes in each rear support. The boards were put up in early October and so the stakes keep them from blowing over for those few months before it gets filled. I like to use rebar caps to cover the stakes that are near where anyone would walk. The stakes are put in at an angle to help put some down pressure on the feet and I slid a half inch washer over the stake to help as well. So as you see, what I ended up doing was putting two stakes in each white bracket and then one stake in each 
black bracket. The boards were pretty dirty from taking them down last spring when it was really muddy. So Britt and I wiped them down with a microfiber rag and then power washed the boards, which made them look like new again. Putting the boards up on a warm, sunshiny day definitely has its benefits, and it was great to have the boards up and in top-notch shape before the snow starts flying. If you have uneven terrain and if a board ever comes undone or pops out, here's a little trick. I've found that a couple straps will work great for pulling it back together. Shim the low board as needed and then use a strap on top and bottom to slowly pull those boards back together. Line up the pegs and then use a mallet to tab it back together. And that's the board set up for year five with the tall boards around about three fourths of the rink. It'll be a little experiment to see how the snow drifts into the boards and how they affect snow removal, but I think the additional Tall Boys boards will be a great upgrade. I will be doing an overall video of the year five rink build from start to finish that will come out early next year, but I'm also going into more detail about how we do our netting and then the process of doing under ice lighting. So stay tuned for those videos if you wanna check out the process. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed checking out how these boards were put up. If you have any questions about the process, leave them in the comments below and have a great day.